All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 28th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. And I don't know how many of those year numbers we have left. <laughs> Go ahead, it's going. Uh, of course, we're coming up to the uh, really close to 2,000 years from Christ's uh, death and resurrection. So. Not that that necessarily means anything. No, no one knows the day or the hour. But it has to be close. It has to be close because of what's happening in the world. The, uh, the, uh, the lawlessness, the exploding of lawlessness from top to bottom. The, the governments have become lawless, especially in this country and in the West. Totally lawlessness. Uh, the so-called democracies don't care what the people think. They're just going to do their own thing. We see that in Germany, in England, in Canada. Canada, uh, polite Canada has become one of the most intolerant countries on earth uh, for for the truth. And the United States, with the lawlessness. Now, this is not a new thing, but it's been expanding rapidly. It's just exploding recently, uh, especially in the last seven or eight years. Since 2015, particularly just an explosion of lawlessness. Uh, what happened in 2015, if my memory is correct? Well, I know there was a certain court decision, and there was an explosion. I still remember the, the, uh, the newsreels, uh, news stories, of, of, of showing the people marching in the streets celebrating the decision. Just utter lawlessness. So what I want to look at today is, is I became aware yesterday that the National Association of Evangelicals has gone woke, apostate. To be a woke Christian is to be an apostate. Because, uh, and uh, let me try to explain simply, of course this does require some previous knowledge on your part, what woke is. Woke is a, a, a coming to a radical consciousness, almost a conversion experience, of racial identity, of your racial identity. So that racial identity, now the modern concept of race is not biblical at all. And when I was in school, I remember in grade school, they said there's four races, the white, the black, the red, and the yellow. What is, what is wrong with their definition of right now? The Bible talks about ethnicities, the the uh, the ethnos, ethnic groups, uh, um, of people, nations related by descent uh, from certain ancestors. But the the concept of the world, modern scientific racism. <laughs> There's no scientific basis for this. It's based solely on skin color. And I've noticed there's a continuous gradient from really dark skin to really light skin. And certain other physical variants, you know, hair color. So what? This, this is the, the white hair race. But I was, well, almost always that. It's then, of course, you can change your 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 hair identity uh, race by using dyes. But the idea that race is determined by skin color is absolutely absurd, totally absurd. But you you take this really toxic idea that I've tried to resist. 
You know, when you, you fill out for a driver's license and they want your racial identity and you put down human. And they say, well, that's not one of the options. I asked, is there an other? So I chose other. Why do they need that? They got a photograph on your uh, driver's license, right? It's be you, The biggest promoter of racial identity is the government of the United States, in the United States. They're the ones that try to put you in all these boxes. But see, here, so uh, the, the idea of woke, if you go back and research it and read some of the literature, it, it's really, uh, it's tightly related to the liberation theology, uh, Marxist class, well, more than that, liberation theology is a manifestation of Marxism within Roman Catholicism. Uh, the idea of class struggle. Now, uh, in Marx, the idea of the struggle between the, the, uh, the bourgeoisie, the ownership class, the business class, the landowners, and the proletariat, the working class. And it was the, the, the bourgeoisie, the, the owner class, was oppressing the workers' class. And, of course, this fed all into the labor movement and everything else, into this antagonistic thing that's utterly unchristian. And it's satanic because Satan is always dividing up things and putting one group against another. He just loves to do that for fun. He thinks it's so cool just to get all these people to kill each other, hate each other. Because he, what he does is he, ins, he, see, he knows how to destroy people. You just get them to to follow their sinful inclinations, and you create reasons for them to hate people without cause. And you get reasons for people to act as members of a group, rather than as individuals, because our responsibility as human beings is individual, and it's to God. And you got to get God out of the picture. So he wants, him, he wants you to be consumed with other ideas. So it is a radical identification with race, which, you know, there's been other movements. He's done this. Satan recycles his ideas over and over again because they work so well. I can think in American history, what was the first racial identity group, probably, that organized? The Ku Klux Klan. The oppressed white minority the the landowning you know the uh, the clan was uh, a reaction against uh, reconstructionism and uh, the enforced domination of the, the the blacks in the southern government <laughs> there was the, the the north was just as oppressive as anybody else yeah um see when you uh, conquer a people and then you treat them badly, well, it'll come back and bite you. And the history of Reconstruction is something you probably will not hear. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, just, it's like what's going on in Ukraine right now. Now, and I pray, now, Putin seems to be a man of wisdom, and he, he is at least a practicing Christian. It doesn't mean he's born again, but it means he's a practicing Christian, and Christianity does influence his actions, and it's pretty clear. Um, and the news media coverage is, of course, abominable, because it's all propaganda. Just as thick as you can get. But uh, if, if, if President Putin has the wisdom to treat Ukraine uh, in a Christian manner, that's how you win hearts and minds. You, you treat them well. They have been treating uh, uh, the Ukrainian soldiers that surrender, have been treated or captured, or have been treated very well. Uh, unlike the other side, which is part of that ideology that arose in the 20th century in Germany, that the United States put in power and is funding a neo Nazi movement. Well, actually, they're not neo Nazis, they're old Ryan Nazis. Followers, the national hero is Stefan Bandera. I suggest you look him up. He was a uh, really bad guy. And he's the hero. They built monuments to him in the Ukraine after the United States 
assisted a coup, as it so often does. Uh, apparently, the goal of the United States is to destroy Russia, which is not the communist is not a communist country, not our enemy. In fact, many intelligent Christians are moving there, leaving the West with good cause. Because the West is, well, bad. It's a talk about a place built on lies. Russia has gone back to their Christian roots. Now, orthodoxy is, again, the problem is it's the same as, uh, um, it's not state religion in Russia anymore. But uh, it's not like under the czars. But uh, orthodoxy, like Catholicism, uh, no, maybe not quite as bad as Catholicism, doesn't, doesn't really have a clear idea of the gospel and the necessity of the new birth. But that's true of almost all Christians in the United States, too. So, in spite of all the preaching, I, very few people that talk about being... Or, under Jimmy Carter, that became a thing. It was almost unknown prior to that. Uh, the term being born again. Well, he certainly wasn't. See, that's why it can be easily, it, it, it's some sort of a religious experience or a decision you make. People like Billy Graham really confuse things. Uh, the new evangelicalism, the worldly evangelicalism of Graham. So anyway, the National Association of Evangelicals, which, which doesn't even know what an evangelical is anymore. But I, I'm getting back to the woke issue. i got to finish what I was saying. Uh, so it's a radical racial consciousness. You're, you self-identify with a group based on your skin color. Not uh, because it's not like if you're talking about Africa and you're talking about a whole continent of different ethnicities. So, so um, you're, you're talking to ra radical identity with a really distorted idea of race and mixed with uh, the Marxist concept of class struggle, the oppressor class and the oppressed class. So the reason, and many people have trouble understanding this in the United States, is, is why are we evil because our skin is, is, is paler than other people? Why are we the oppressors because we have, say, white skin? Because of, the, of this ideology that says you're a member of a group and your identity is all tied up in that group and your guilt or your virtue is tied up in being a member of that group. Uh, so we had racial identity really became strong in the United States post-Civil War, and you had like the, the Klan arising with the, the, uh, the conquered Southern whites, especially the poorer ones, with some assistance from the higher ones, uh, the class struggle, you know, suffering under uh, uh, Reconstruction. And, I mean, the, the North enforced things at bayonet point, including the states voting for the changes in the Constitution. They did it at bayonet point. That's not how, that, that's not lawful, by the way. Those amendments to the Constitution really should be considered unlawful because of the circumstances. Voting at bayonet point is not a lawful vote. It's coercion. And when, they, when some of the states refused to do it, they simply uh, marched the state legislature out the door and installed the people that would vote for it. See, America's been doing that for a long time. That Lincoln was a scoundrel. Of course, at that time he was dead, but it was just, uh, and that contributed to the problem. So, uh, the world. This is the world. We're talking about the world. The United States is not exceptional as being better than any place else. It's not true. Human beings are the same all over. Now, this idea of a radical, a almost a conversion experience to. Uh, uh, identifying yourself with a, a race, just like 
uh, poor whites that are caught up in the, that get caught in the Ku Klux Klan, which fortunately is sort of on the way at the moment. It'll come well. Now it's re been replaced with other groups. You had the rise of Antifa, and then you had other factions that rose to oppose them. Uh, Antifa doesn't get prosecuted, but the other factions do. Ha! Huh, that tells you that, that Antifa is not not a... There's powers behind Antifa, obviously. Why do they uh, arise at certain times and then sort of fade away? And then Because they're being manipulated. I suspect there may be uh, very sophisticated manipulations being done using AI and the Internet. We already know the CIA has been uh, uh, manipulating the American public and the voting in this country, which is totally unlawful. What else is new? This is not a democracy. It's not a republic anymore. It's not. It, there, there's been a quiet takeover by other powers. The deep state, for example. It's not a myth. You're just not supposed to say that, even though it's right in your face constantly. But uh, so it's a, it's a radical awakening of a, a racial consciousness, a, a group identity, you know, identity politics, breaking people up into these different groups and and pigeonholing them and making promises to each group individually, even if it's contradictory. Obama was really good at that, but he didn't really start the idea. Uh, combined with a modified Marxist class struggle idea, only it's a racial struggle, the oppressed race versus the, the oppressor race. So you're guilty on the basis of, of class membership. See, like, like on classical Marxist theory, which is economic racism, the, the, the property owner versus the workers that didn't own the property, it's it was an economic thing. In America, they decide they this this um, and its connections with liberation theology and, and the writers of that are, are very strong connections there. They they took inspiration from that. Uh, but the idea of uh, a class struggle based on the oppressed uh, blacks because some blacks were slaves, not all blacks were slaves. Some blacks were slave owners. The Cherokee American Indians, for example, were slave owners. Slavery existed in the United States long before Europeans came here. Uh, slavery was really strong in Africa, always. Islam slavery is inherent to Islam. That's why we're there. you have radical Islamic movements arising in places and slavery returns, because it was the Europeans who coerced, they forced you know, in strong-armed, the uh, the African uh, Islamic, see, all of North Africa was Islamic. So the, the uh, uh, to to uh, outlaw slavery, basically, uh, naval boat uh, warships arrived and said, "Yeah, we want you to do this." Join the civilized world. But it's there, and it's it will always be there because of the Quran, the teachings of uh, Muhammad. People that take that seriously uh, are going to say that slavery is something we're supposed to practice. Christianity, there is no mandate to practice slavery, and in fact, uh, even in the uh, the Constantinian kind of Christianity, where you had the merger of church and state. And the the uh, basically the emasculation of, of real Christianity, you still had slavery dying out. You had, like in the Middle Ages, you had serfs and the uh, the barons. So you had different class groups, but still it was uh, uh, it, it was the kind of slavery that was practiced in the Islamic world, uh, which is they were almost. I suspect they were heavily involved in the slave trade, selling slaves to people that were willing to buy them and use them in the Americas. There were certain reasons for that. Uh, it had to do with the ability of Africans to 
to uh, do heavy labor in semi-tropical regions like the southern part of the United States. Now, it would have gone away eventually anyway. Uh, uh, mechani mechanization, basically, well, just like mechanization has destroyed family farms in the United States, it would have wiped out, uh, it would have uh, eliminated the need for slaves when you had machines able to do things like uh, very labor-intensive work like cotton picking and planting as all became mechanized and that would have you know but would have been an economic reason not to have slaves no. but uh you know, it just cost the lives of 600,000 people see there was already a if you want a blood atonement there was already something called the civil war I guess that wasn't enough and so the, the southern Whites and plantation owners suffered under under uh, Reconstruction. I guess that wasn't enough either. See, it's never enough for some people. So you're awakened to a group identity, and then you're told the lie that you're a member of an oppressed group, and uh, you, you need to overthrow the oppressors. But even the people in this recognize that the those the oppressed group that overthrows the oppressors, then in turn they become the oppressors. And they have to be overthrown. So it's a never-ending cycle. It's not an answer. Never an answer. But now, even so that is a brief explanation of what wokeism is. It is this radical uh, racial consciousness mixed with Marxist class struggle ideas. Revolutionary. It's a revolutionary ideology. At which is why many people couldn't understand is why can't we just say all lives matter? Because it's not racial conscious. You're not allowed to not recognize the the categories, the classes. See, see th th that is see, see all lives matter puts it on the individual that. Now, see, what class struggle matters is, see, you can justify anything then because uh, it's, it's like mob rule. It's not you, it's the class. See, the problem is the oppressors. It's not your sin, it's theirs. They're the ones that cause you to do these bad things. It's displacing responsibility from your, yourself to others and to groups, not to yourself. That's not where the Bible is. It's you and God individually. It's not class politics. God doesn't engage in class actions. Everyone will be judged for their own sin. And when you're saved, it has to be personally. You have to be reconciled personally with God. You can't, be a, you can't have a, a, a national salvation doesn't work that way. So, what I found out yesterday was that the NAE, which is a parachurch, whatever it is, uh, of supposedly representing all kinds of evangelical denominations, uh, you used to be able to find a list of them on the website. But now, uh, they've, they've, they've gone to this racial, racial reconciliation promotion, which is uh, the, the oppressor class has to do penance. My ancestors weren't even in the country, nor was slavery legal in most of the United States. California is going to pay, what is it, $5 million to every person that can show their ancestors were, were a, a victim of racism in the United States. But there was uh, 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 slavery was never recognized as legal in the state of California. There was slavery there, but it was the uh, the Spanish uh, and the enslaved Indians. Some that was a different thing. Uh, they probably won't get the five million because it's politics. It's buying votes. It's just nuts. Uh, it's, it's everything's just gone insane, totally insane. But so the NAE. N -A, yeah, National Association of Evangelicals, has launched this woke program. And it's really in your face. And I want to show you this, because I heard about it in other places else, and I looked at it, and I, no. 
this is a very bad website, by the way. It doesn't work on some browsers, like the one I usually use is Firefox, because I can put ad blockers in. So I had to actually use Edge Microsoft browser, which I generally don't use. But every once in a while, something won't work, and I'll have to use it. So here, I've got to actually select it on the screen here. Okay, so here is the website. And this is what comes up. This is not the old website. You're, you're, you're given a presentation. You're not given information. You're given a presentation. In your face, pop-up. When you first open this website, this is what you see. How can you grow in the area of racial reconciliation? Take, a three, min take three minutes to fill out our new Racial Justice Assessment. This is utterly of the world. This is apostasy. The NAE is apostate. Uh, they are of the world. The, the, to, the only reason to do this is to appeal to the world. It is following the world. Just like the uh, the green energy movement is following the world, it's all politics. It's not it's not science, by the way. It's it's utterly absurd. God has fossil fuels on the earth for this time because you could not have a population of eight billion people without them. And there is no sustainable. Uh, system in this world because sin is destroying it. You, you can't, it won't work. It won't work. None of their solutions will work because God is left out of everything, just like God is left out of science nowadays. God is left out of medicine, medical science. God is not part of the picture. God is left out of government. It is totally doomed. It's all in darkness. And here's another example of apostasy in the church. What's supposed to be evangelicals. An evangelical, the different, historically the difference between evangelicalism and the rest of Orthodox Christianity was the emphasis on what Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. That you don't become a Christian through water baptism, through infant baptism, which is what most of Christianity believes in. Most, the vast majority. No. No, that, that is a product of state Christianity, of Constantinianism, the, although that idea was present before then, because you have to have a Christianity that can, you can actually function as, on a national level and include everybody, whereas uh, biblical Christianity, you have to be born again to be part of the kingdom of God, period. And that's something only God does, and you can't control God. You can't make God save you. You can, ask, you can cry out to him to save you, but you can't make him do it. It's God's choice, chosen by God, called by God. You're not in control. He is. Because he's God and you're not. That's a radical idea, isn't it? So you, this is in your face. NAE is in your face. And I started taking this thing and this is indoctrination to take this survey, uh, <clears throat> this assessment, is to indoctrinate you into it. It's like multiple choice, and it's like on a spectrum. And I did not, I just started going to, on into it, and I said, no, I know where this is going. I'm not going to continue on in this. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing I want to show you they have another thing called, but this is the, the, the main thing, and we're going to look at this in more detail in a safe way. Uh, there's this thing, other promotion there uh, for the health of the nation. See, they are not promoting Jesus Christ and him crucified. They are totally of the world now, which is logically, uh, illogically follows, given new evangelicalism and Billy Graham and the, the idea to draw, to be friends with the world in order to win the world. So you've got to be into what the world's into. 
This is not biblical Christianity at all. Biblical Christianity maintains a separation from the world. We're not of the world. We live in the world. We live in the midst of this stuff, but we don't belong to the world. This is not our kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of God. We're radically separated by that fact. We are not part of their identity groups. We can't be. Our identity is Jesus Christ. You understand that? As a Christian, if you're a real Christian, Christ is your identity. Christ is our, our fellowship. Christians need to understand this. In churches, our fellowship is not based on skin color or, or national identity or anything like that. Our identity is Christ. He is, in fact, I love the brethren because Christ is in them. It is a supernatural work of God. The, the NAE understands nothing anymore. This is, you know, once upon a time, say in the 70s, this was understood better. Now it's gone. The NAE is gone. It is of the world, utterly of the world. So what they have here, this is something for the health of the nation. But they don't tell you what it's about, really. Rather, they give you an opportunity to download the PDF. Okay? So when you click on this, guess what? Do you get a download window? No. You get a uh, get to consent and give your information, including your email address. No, you can't and just get the information, the, the, the PDF. No, it costs them nothing to give you the PDF. No, they want your information. Just like the, a big corporation someplace. For the health of the nation. The, the evangelical call to civil responsibility. Civic responsibility. Nonsense. Don't believe these people. They are of the world. They would probably tell you to vote for Biden. Whereas a Christian should vote for Jesus Christ. Have you ever done that? I've done that. It had to be a write-in, though. It's really hard. I don't know if you can even write in anymore. How do you write in on an electronic machine? Those are bad ideas, too. Paper is good. Things hidden behind electronics are bad. So here... Uh, Uh, here, they, here's another place where they want your email address. See, they want to indoctrinate you. But back to this, uh, where is it, page here. So this is a pop-up. This is what you see when you first go to the site. This is in your face. Uh, let's see here. You, so they want you to take this. Now, again, this assessment will indoctrinate you because you will want to be approved and not disapproved. This, this is, you have to conform. It's to conform to what the world wants. This is all about helping you conform to the world. Faith, united in faithful witness to the transformational gospel. Transforming society, not the sinner. This is utter garbage. This is, this is nothing but modernism in the church. Again, it was so effective the first time. Now you've got to, uh, now that all the liberal churches are dead now, now you've got to kill off the, the other churches. And that's what this is doing, is to kill the church. To strip it of everything. You cannot believe in wokeism and be Christian. First of all, the, the, it's totally contrary to the Bible. Let, oh, let me pursue, where was that statement? 
Okay, they did have a statement here, and they go into... Where was that? Did I lose it? I hope not. Um, bless your pastor. Depends on what he preaches. Okay. I had it here before. Okay, here. Uh, I think I have to go down farther. No. Nope. So what do they say about it here? Oh, here it is. I was looking for the, there was one that had scripture. We're going to go and check their scripture references out. And I haven't done this yet, so this is almost live. <laughs> almost live. <clears throat> Again, I've got to figure out where that is, because I have to bring up the, I have to bring up, uh, if I don't use Edge, I get layers of font in the wrong place. And These people do not know how to do a website either. They must have the same people do it that did the Obamacare websites. Worst websites possible. The incompetence of government and the incompetence of the NAE. Can I zoom it in at all? Okay. The bu <laughs> now, see, it, there, it, it, if you're going to tell a lie, tell a big lie. Doesn't, wasn't that what the Minister of Propaganda for the, the Nazi Party said? Uh, Goebbels? Uh, uh, use a big lie. The Bible, does, does, does this first line sound like a lie to you? It does to me. The Bible uniformly teaches the essential dignity of all humans and the shared desire to belong in community. Really? Where does it teach this? Yet the, the devastating reality of sin results in... Uh, denigration and alienation. From what? From God. The denigration of human beings. Yeah, we're not the image of God because we're sinners. And the alienation of God. But that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about the relationship of human beings and God. They don't care about that anymore. That's not what they're into. They're into the world now following the, the logic of Billy Graham and the neo-evangelicalism. Be friends with the world to win them to Christ. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I don't think the Bible teaches that. So the, this is a, so the Bible uniformly teaches this stuff, right? Christians affirm the gospel brings reconciliation not only between God and humanity. Do I have that a little bit stretched out too far, maybe? See, I'm clipping. Uh, between God and humanity, but also among estranged groups of people. Really? So let's let's see. So they give us some scripture. All of this is always fun. Let's check out their scripture references, since they don't actually quote it, in context. That will tell you what kind of people they are. Are they deceivers, or are they handling the, handling the Bible faithfully? Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Does, is Galatians a book about racial reconciliation? See, in the church, see, they'll actually quote something that, that totally des destroys this, uh, this idea they're promoting. This is as far as I got on this. I just saw the verse and didn't even bother to read the whole thing, realized this is just nonsense. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, you, then you are Abraham's seeds and seed and heir according to the promise. 
Is that singular or plural, by the way? Abraham's seed. Why do I ask? Because it matters. Uh, sperma. Singular! Who is Abraham's seed? Singular. Christ. Christ. It is whether you are in Christ or not. That is the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. In Christ or not. So, does this, what does this say about human beings in general? Nothing. In the church, see, and because we have a love for the brethren, read 1 John, that's given by God, we love them because Christ is in them. He is our koinonia, our common fellowship. He is what joins us all together. He is why you can meet a stranger that's a Christian, a true Christian, and immediately you love them. Because you love Christ, and Christ is in them, too, just like he's in you. And you recognize that we're all together. It has nothing to do with skin color. It has nothing to do with the world. It has to do with Christ, and only with Christ. This is one of the problems I've noticed with some of the, the uh, independent fundamental Baptist ideas of fellowship. Like faith and practice, no, whether you're in Christ or not, is the basis of fellowship. You can have different ideas about some things, but whether you belong to Christ. See, you know, I don't have a fellowship with a person that might have ideas that are very similar to mine or identical with me, but if they're not in Christ, there's no fellowship there because fellowship is supernatural. It's not like what they call church fellowship. No, that's not fellowship at all. Having a fellowship dinner, that's not fellowship. No, they're trying to promote something that's actually supernatural. You can't make it happen. Nor can you make uh, give people new heart by promoting a worldly program. See, they have no idea what it means to be born again anymore. They've totally lost it. There aren't... <laughs> Oh, they have no idea. So, what is is this teaching? Is what Paul's teaching here? There is neither new Jew or Nick. For as many, see, why didn't they? Why didn't they read it in context? Let's go back and read it in context. He's talking about the, the problem in Galatia was they, their Judaizers were going around teaching them they had to keep the law or at least one commandment of the law, circumcision, in order to be acceptable to God. So it was Christ plus some works of the law. And Paul said, no, if you do that, you've cut yourself off from Christ. It's faith alone in Christ alone. And if you add anything to that, you're separated, you've separated yourself from, from the gospel. So much for once saved, all was saved. <laughs> they had been cut, they cut themselves off because they were adding, they were taught they needed to be circumcised too, so they thought that doing this work of the law was necessary also for salvation, so Christ was not sufficient anymore. That was a problem. This is a big deal, by the way. Every pastor should read this at least twice a year. Salvation by faith alone. Salvation is not something that happens to you and that's it, and that's a, a past event. No, it's a, it's a life. It's an ongoing life. You're in Christ. That's not something at one time. Well, I was in Christ then, so I'm, that, that's good enough. No, you, you're, are, are you in Christ or not? It's a continuing thing. So does this apply to the world? Verse 26, for, we, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That doesn't apply to the world. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. This is talking about baptism as a symbol of faith and commitment. The baptism itself doesn't cause it. Water doesn't cause it. We're baptized by the Spirit into Christ. Water is just a visible symbol of it. 
And it's a testimony that uh, God has saved you. That's believer's baptism. That's the only valid form of baptism. And it doesn't save you. It's just a testimony to Christians that, uh, yes, I've joined you. And then you're, but if your life doesn't demonstrate it, it doesn't mean a thing. It just means you're a false believer, an unbelieving believer. Then, it's a, it, those who have been baptized, in, those who have put on Christ, who have been baptized into Christ. Again, it's not the water, it's what God does. Baptized by the Spirit into Christ. This is supernatural work. And the water is just a visible uh, sign of it that's not really necessary. But it's good, but it's, it certainly doesn't, your salvation does not depend on, on being dunked in water. That's an issue I have with uh, some Baptists, too, that if, if you haven't been baptized by immersion, they won't have fellowship with you. Really? What's the basis for that, biblically? What does it really matter whether it's immersion or pouring? Immersion is more biblical, but it doesn't under, show an understanding of the intent of baptism. Of course, in Jesus' days, it de was definitely by immersion. There was no question about that. <laughs> see the pictures of John the Baptist standing in the river with a, a shell full of water pointed on Jesus' head. What an absurd illustration. Absolutely absurd. Why would they be standing in the river? In fact, in the Jordan River, you have to find a proper spot that's deep enough. I've, I've experienced that, trying to find a spot in a small stream that's deep enough to baptize somebody in. Or small river. I've spent my time waiting out there trying to find a place. Uh. Then, see, in for those who are in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. See, that this doesn't this is not relevant to Christianity. This the NAE is not relevant to Christian Christianity to real Christianity, utterly irrelevant, because our identity is in Christ, not in race anyway. We are not of this world. Skin colors are of the world. Uh, class struggle is of the world. It has nothing to do with Christians. And Christians could, should say that when the world says, asks us about this or that, we say, what does that have to do with me? I belong to Christ. I am not of this world. You are of this world. I am not. We have an identity group. That is the, our identity group is Christ, those who are in Christ. Period. You need to be radically converted to that, to Christ. You wouldn't be tempted by this other stuff if you were, if you were saved. Because it's all being conformed to the world. It's about being acceptable to the world. That's what Billy Graham's thing was all about, too, the neo-evangelicalism. Him and others. It wasn't just Billy Graham. He's just the most visible uh, of them. Uh, Post-World War II, this, uh, they, they just did not like the separatism of fundamentalism, uh, which was nothing but Orthodox Christianity. Uh, Orthodox, old evangelicalism. Orthodox doctrine with the necessity of the new birth. That's, they didn't not like it because some had taken certain ideas too far, obviously. The fun, fundamentalist movement has often gone off into culture warfare. The, uh, the prohibition movement and all these other things that were brought in Uh, to revivalism had nothing to do with Christ at all. And you still hear it. Tra these, some of these old traditions that are just garbage. Because people are unwilling to search the scriptures and see if it's so. Okay, let's go on to the next verse. 
uh, Ephesians, uh, Galatians is not relevant because the world, you cannot reconcile, see, you can't reconcile the world one with another because they're not reconciled to God in Christ. There can't be any reconciliation there because they're sinful, and sinful human beings do what sinful human beings do to each other. They're trying to fix the problem with world, the world's ideas. It's like trying, trying to solve uh, the sin of uh, alcohol drunkenness with a 12-step program. It doesn't work. It's not God's solution. You must be born again. Ephesians 2, 4. See, see, this is, now they don't quote these verses. They just give you these verses. And you, if you look at them in context, you realize what scoundrels the NAE is now. They are promoting the world. They are servants of Satan. Out and out certain servants of Satan. So let's go over to Ephesians 2.14. Who are these letters written to? To the world? To the NAE? For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, the Jews and the Greeks, or uh, the Gentiles, in him. There is no Jew nor Greek, no Jew, nor Jew nor Gentile in Christ. I have an issue with the, uh, the, the uh, what do they call them, the, the Jewish, uh, uh, the pseudo, or they, I shouldn't say pseudo, the the. Jewish Christians who want to hold on to their Jewish identity. Because it's contrary to Scripture. See, if you want to set yourself apart from other Christians and practice your Judaism, then you're, you're not actually practicing New Testament Christianity. So he's talking the middle wall of separation was the wall that separated the Gentiles from the Jews in the temple in Jerusalem. There was a wall that uh, uncircumcised people could not go past. So if you had become a been circumcised, you could. That's why Paul circumcised Timothy so he'd be able to actually go into the temple. That was the only reason. And it wouldn't, they couldn't use that, his uncircumcision, although I believe he did have a Jewish uh, mother. Uh, uh, so, but the uncircumcision as a, well, excuse to kill him and to go after Paul, too, for bringing in an uncircumcised person. Having abolished in his flesh. The law of commandments contained in the ordinances. This has nothing. To, the separation that's spoken here is the separation that God established in the Old Testament law between Jews and non-Jews. What does this have to do with the world and ra racial reconciliation? This has nothing to do with race. It has to do with whether you kept the covenant of Moses or not. These people are utterly ignorant. They're abusing the scripture. The National Association of Evangelicals is an in-your-face twister of the Bible. Why is your denomination a member of it? Why are you sending the money, you foolish people? Unless you like people that twist the Bible having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances that the Jews, on uh, people that were not in the covenant, having been circumcised, and believers in Yahweh, could not enter into the temple, into the uh, uh, courts that were restricted to the Jewish people. Uh, circumcised people. And you had the court of the women and then the court of the men 
so in farther, which was where the sacrifices took place. But they could not enter into the temple, only the priests could, and into the holy place, the holy of holies, only the high priest, and only once a year, and not without offerings. This is all abolished today. All Christians, when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom, signifying that that separation was gone. We are united by Christ, but only those who are in Christ, who are actually in him, who have been born again. Well, if you haven't been born again, you are not in the kingdom of God. Regardless of your church membership, you're not in the kingdom of God, unless you've been born again. Evangelicalism used to proclaim that. Now they proclaim the wisdom of the world. That he might create in himself one new man. See, you're no longer Jew or Gentile. You're Gentile. The new race of Christ. From the two, thus making peace. Reconciled within him. Says, Paul repeatedly teaches this stuff. That he might reconcile them both to God has nothing to do with reconciling uh, sinners to sinners, which is impossible. Self-centered people can never be reconciled together because they can't love one another as they love themselves. They cannot do it. They lack the capacity. They cannot keep the law of God. They lack the capacity. They're alienated from God. That's the problem. Reconciled them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. The enmity of what? The commandments. The separation enforced by the commandments between Jew and Gentile. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. That through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Has nothing to do with the world. This separates you from the world. It unites us to God in Christ. But only to those who belong to him. Who are born again by God, who have been called by God and chosen by God and transformed by God through the new birth. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, speaking to the Gentiles here, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. This has nothing to do with the world. The world is going to destruction. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Huh. You think they misuse that verse? Just throw a reference out there. All this reference, this is, this is a Rick Warren school of biblical interpretation. Find a verse that mentions something like what you want to say. The context of the scripture is irrelevant because it's not about what God says. It's about what you're wanting to say. If you have a preacher that does that, run away from that church. Or fire that preacher if you have the ability. He's a, a, a twister of God's word. Okay, so we've dealt with, they've got one more verse for us. They have, uh, let's see here. Colossians 3.11. So three strikes and you're out, right? Colossians 
Colossians 3, 11. I'll get there. For there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, uh, slave or free, but Christ is in is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, the chosen of God, elect means chosen, holy and beloved, you're saved because God saved you. If he hasn't chosen you, you're not a Christian. This is not the same as the Calvinist idea of election. Let me make that very clear. Put on, ten, well, who does he save? Who does he choose? Those who believe him. Those who believe the message of the gospel. So let's go back to the context here. This is, they are utterly misusing scripture. This has nothing to do about reconciliation of sinners to sinners. Can't. They are by nature hostile, not only to God, but to one another. They are self-centered. They use one another. They don't truly love one another. They are self-centered by nature, by fallen nature, because the Spirit of God is not in them. God is love. There is no true love in sinners. Period. They love what pleases them because they're self-centered. And as soon as something doesn't please them, they hate it. You have to understand the nature of fallen humanity. Well, Billy Graham didn't believe that either. He didn't believe in that. He didn't believe that in the, the radical effects of sin. Didn't. He demonstrated it. He didn't care about doctrine at all. That's why he put Catholic bishops on the, on the platform with him in his, uh, in his uh, uh, crusades. He didn't care about what God said. You know, false prophets have always been popular with the world. Jesus said no prophet is uh, accepted among his own people. Billy Graham was not a, a prophet of God. He was not a teach, preacher of God. He preached his decisionism. Make a decision for Christ. And then he used crowd manipulation te techniques to get people to come forward. Psychosocial techniques, like pump priming. You have all your volunteers rush forward with at the altar call. I've seen this. I, I noticed that. Wait a minute. These people have a, a tag on their lapel. They are workers there. They are volunteers there. And they're going forward at the altar call. Why? To give people the idea that, well, I don't want to be the first one. So they prime the pump. It's all manipulation. You can't manipulate God. Billy Graham never understood what salvation was. Or he wouldn't have done what he did. There was a tangent. Colossians 3.11. Okay, let's, that's a context. Do, starting in verse 9. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man and his deeds. You have been crucified to the world. You still have the flesh with you. But you are not that flesh anymore. Your identity is in Christ. You have a new spirit and a new heart. The new birth is a real thing. The NAE has no idea of anything anymore. They are apostate. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. See, we are renewed according to the image of God. This is an undoing of the fall. We still await the redemption of our bodies. But internally, we have a new nature and a new spirit. Unfortunately, there, God has a reason for this, by the way. I just don't want to get into it now. That we still dwell in these mortal bodies in which sin also dwells. 
And the reason is, I'll get into it briefly, that the surpassing glory might be of God and not of us. That it's God's work. Creation is God's work. And when people don't understand that, they understand nothing. That, that's what was a real disaster of uh, Constantinianism, where the, the church became united with the society and membership in the church became the means of salvation and baptism became the means of salvation and the priesthood of the church became the means of salvation because it's not real Christianity. It's something human beings can do. But real Christianity is something only God can do. It requires the power of God, the will of God, the calling and choice of God. So in Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew. It has nothing to do with the world, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free. But Christ is all and in all. This has nothing to do with the world. And these people at the NAE are so spiritually dead that they can use a verse like this and not have a clue what they're saying. This, is an, this organization has become an abomination, anti-Christianity, because its, its idea of salvation is utterly foreign to the Bible. Anti-Christianity, the uh, Association of Evangelicals, what is it, the National Association of Evangelicals. Anti-Christianity. They are going with the world because they love the world. They don't know Christ. No one that supports this ideology can possibly know Christ because of violation of the Spirit of God. It's an it's a offense to Christ in you. God will not permit you to do it. And those who join with them in their crusade to, to, to fix the world demonstrate they don't belong to Christ by their actions, nor do they care what Christ says by how they treat his word. That, that, that is what really tripped me, uh, tipped me off with uh, uh, Rick Warren and his purpose-driven life, because I can remember uh, people were after me to read that, and I put it off and put it off and put it off because I didn't. I knew there was something wrong with Rick Warren. But uh, I finally said, well, I should read it. And I, I read it, and I remember, you know, I can't, I know it's wrong, but I can't put my finger on it. And then uh, I believe the Holy Spirit prompted me to, to consider, how does Rick Warren use the scriptures? Because it's really hard you, you, to, to even look up a scriptural reference. You've got to go back to the back of the book and find it someplace in the back because he uses all kinds of different versions to say what he wants to say. He is simply using what he does in that book. is Rick Warren does this. He uses the Bible to give authority to Rick Warren's message. He doesn't care what God says. He is simply using the word of God to, to as a, uh, a name dropping, to, to try to give authority to what he's saying. Knowing that people probably don't look up, it, it makes it so difficult to look up the verse. He doesn't even quote it. And you can, I could, I was remembered, I, I was, I know the Bible pretty well. And when somebody quotes it, and it doesn't sound like the Bible. I can't recall it being in the Bible. It's He's using a really twisted translation. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. It's just something to use to, to further his agenda. He doesn't care. It's like when he, uh, they, they are, he finally got, they finally got, uh, the Southern Baptists finally kicked him, his church out, kicked him and his church out because they ordained uh, a husband and wife. And I think they ordained some other women, too. Uh, why? Because Rick Warren loves the world. 
the church loves the world. The whole church, the whole movement, the secret sensitive movement is about pleasing the world, pleasing sinners, creating a church that is compatible with sinners, that sinners will want to attend because it offers what they like. It offers the kind of music they like. It offers the messaging they like, the programs they like. It's a, a community center. It's a club. It's like Joel Osteen's church, so-called church. Why is it the biggest church in the United States? Because it appeals to sinners who have no, no desire to get rid of their sin, who have no desire to be reconciled with God, who want to hear good things, that God loves them just like they are, and God's going to bless them with prosperity and health. Lies. Not telling them they are alienated from God. They are hostile toward God. They need to be reconciled to God. That message doesn't fly. You will not build a big church with that message. That's the situation we're in. And obviously the uh, National Association of Evangelicals is far more in love with the world than in love with God. They are the apostasy. They are of the apostasy. They have left Christ for the world. They have become woke. They care more about what the world thinks than about what Christ thinks. Well, I think you should give them the appropriate disfellowship. And if your church is sending them money, you might want to ask your pastor, why are we funding this woke organization that cares more about pleasing the world than pleasing Christ? But there's a danger in that. You might find out that your pastor is worldly too. I hope not. I hope not.